received by the CIPC Call Center. My name is Shani Kelly, and I will be your facil facilitator for today's program. Ms. Mahta Swama, the manager of the Call Center, will be today's presentation. The presentation will be followed with a question and answer session. Please remember that during the, the webinar, you are welcome to post your questions relating only to today's topic under comments. So on your chat box, you can post as many questions as you like relating to our topics that we are covering today. We will report to respond to these questions after the presentation. If you have questions that are not related to the topic, please log a query on the CIPC website inquiry system or send a message on CIPC's Facebook on Messenger. The recordings of today's webinar will remain on YouTube. If you want to view it again later, or if you want to use the YouTube link that is provided in on our webinar. It is with great pleasure that I hand you over to Mrs. Magda Swema. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. As Shani mentioned, my name is Magda Swemer. And today's topic is basically, um, we're going to discuss all the main queries received by CIPC, especially via the call center. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm sometimes going to go to the websites, the live sites, so that you can see on the site what we need to do and where you need to go to, for example, change your password or to see what your customer code is. Thank you. So let me start with the presentation. Okay, the topics at the agenda is basically main queries received by the call center, which includes the customer code and password reset, and also disclosures or certificates of certificates where you ask for specific certificates, for example, the registration certificate, disclosure certificate for 30 rand, and also the MOI incorporation documents. <clears throat> and we also look at a challenge that we receive quite a lot is where people uh, or customers deposit funds into the CIPC bank account, but then it's not allocated to their customer code. So what to be what you can do done from your side to make sure that it's reflecting in your customer code. And then lastly, <coughs> we're also going to look at this portal. Um, name reservation and company registration. So um, why we specifically talk about this portal because it's actually a very user-friendly way to reserve a name and to register a company because it's not necessary to send any documents to CRPC if you register your company using this portal. Just as an introduction, um, I just want to mention that CRPC was brought into existence by the Companies Act of 2008. And in terms of Section 185, um, 1, the Commission is established as a juristic person to function as an organ of the state within the public administration, but it is an institution outside the public service. And I just want to uh, mention uh, what, I'm, what we're going to focus on is basically the first and second objective of CIPC, namely registration of companies. So we are also responsible for registration of co-ops and intellectual property rights and the maintenance thereof, as well as disclosure of information on its registers, and then also enforcement of this re relevant legislation, <clears throat> and promotion of education and awareness, and licensing of business rescue practitioners, the monitoring and compliance with and contravention of financial reporting standards and standards and making recommendations there too. And then also report, research and advise the ministers on matters of national policy relating to the Companies Act. So first of all, we're just going to look at customer code and password reset. Each customer is allocated a specific CRPC customer code and the customer code is linked to each person's ID. So you can't have uh, share a customer code. Each person 
must have only one customer code. <clears throat> and this customer code is used to log into the CRPC e-services. So, but on this portal, the ID number is used to log into onto this portal, not, not, and it's only South African citizens that can log onto this portal. So you can't log in with, via, with a passport. And then on new e-services, um, customers, the new e-services platform is customers can use their email address to log in to the new e-services. But what is important is that for all these platforms, the, the customer code, password stays the same. So it doesn't matter where you log in, the you will use the same password to log in. So first of all, what I just want to show you is what to do if you forget how to you um, how to your customer code. So I'm just going to e-services, online transacting e-services, and I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so what happens is if you forgot your password, you need to go to this, this website, e-services. So from our main website, you click on online transacting and e-services. And then instead of logging in, you click on <coughs> customer reg registration. Then it will ask you, do you have a South African green ball coded ID? And you'll say yes. And you type your... Um, identity number and your surname and then it will tell you this ID number is already allocated to a customer code and it will indicate to you what your customer code is there it shows it's PRMC01 this is my customer name and it will also show you that the status of your customer code and the balance in your customer code Okay, then we go to the next. Um, sorry, I just want to go to. Okay, can you, Zani? Can you see the, the this presentation? Not yet, Marta. Okay, let me just share it again. Okay, so now if we go to password reset. A lot of customers only use the CRPC portal actually once a year. So they forget their passwords because you, you don't use it often. So the easiest way to reset your password is to visit this portal to reset your password. So, so if your cell phone number or your um, <coughs> email address is up to date, it's easier to use... Um, this portal to reset it. So I'm, I'm going to move to the this portal screen. And then I'll show you how you can reset your password on this portal. Okay. You can also use this portal to register as a customer. The, the URL is www.bisportal.gov.za. And it's a platform used for several of CRPC services. It's like a one-stop shop. You can also apply for UIF, um, etc. So if you go to this portal, then you click on login. And then it will say reset password. So you click on reset password. And you type in your ID number. And click on continue. Then it will send you a link. It will tell you an OTP has been sent to your cell phone number and your email address. And it will show you a part of your cell phone number and a part of your email address. So you can note this immediately if this is your uh, is at least your ID now. Oh, sorry, your email address or your cell phone number is still up to date. Then you can use that one. to You will receive your OTP. So I'm going to my cell phone now. 
and I'll receive my OTP. So I'm going to type it in. I'll tell you now what it is. Okay, so I've, I've received it via SMS and via email. So it's 5268 324 and verify. And then it will ask you to reset your password. So you can immediately change your password here. And you must confirm your password. So what is important is there must be at least one uppercase, one lowercase, a number, and a minimum of eight characters. Special characters are optional. And they said only these few are allowed. So I'm going to update my password. And then it will tell me the password has been updated and I can log in. So then I log into my into this portal. Okay. So um, I, will, I want to encourage everyone, instead of logging a ticket to on the inquiry system, to rather use this portal to reset your password. But what happens is if sometimes, if your cell phone and your e email address is outdated, or there's other problems and you really can't log in, so you need um, basically human intervention. You need to visit the inquiry system and lock a ticket so that the back office can assist you with the password reset. So um, let me just show you live how to do that. Okay, sorry, let me just go to... Okay, so if you're on our website, you click on inquiries, CIPC inquiries, then it will ask you for your email, preferred email address, but that's not what you're going to type in because you're going to request the password reset. So you don't need, can you all see the inquiry screen? Ritzoni, can you see it? I just want to confirm. Yes, Magda, we can see it. Yes, Ritzoni. Okay, so what you need to do, instead of logging into inquiries, because to log into inquiries, you need a password. You just click on password reset. So if you don't need to log in, because that's a query that we often get is to say, but I forgot my password, how can I log in? So you don't need to log in. You just go inquiries.crpc.co.za. It's also available from our homepage of CRPC website. And then click on password reset. And from here, it will ask you a verification. Um, it will be like a verification. So it will ask your customer code and your ID and your names. And verify. And then, then you need to complete all the fields and you need to attach your certified ID copy. And what is important, and, and it's stated here as well, when you do this, you state and that you understood, understood this the, the agreement and that the information is true and correct. So, so you can't provide false information. If you want to reset your password, you need to attach your own um, certified ID copy and then you can complete this. And then a ticket will be locked with CRPC at the back office. So from the back office, there's uh, staff members that will attend to this. So this process is longer than just logging, oh, you know, request the password reset via this portal because human intervention is needed and it must, uh, it must be verified that it is your um, self, uh, your ID. <clears throat> because there's money linked to your customer code, so it, that's where there, a lot of security is required. So basically, I just explained here that you need to visit the inquiry site, click on password reset, attach your certified ID copy, and then the back office will update your query and provide you. So the back office will just update your details. 
then you must still go back and reset your password. So they will not provide you with a password. They will just update your cell phone number and your email address. So to enable you to reset your password. Okay, the next um, topic that we're going to discuss is allocation of funds. So uh, what is very important is that when you deposit funds into the CIPC bank account, it is um, the only reference must be your customer code. You must not write your enterprise number or your surname next to your customer code, anything, because then it will happen that the money is not allocated to your customer code. So make sure, please, also that you don't, um, say, for example, in, put a zero instead of an O or an I instead of a one, because then the money will be allocated to someone else's account because there's a lot of customers. With an, <clears throat> so then it's a, um, it's a problem if it's allocated to someone else's account. So, so if it's a, happened that your money is not allocated, what you need to do is you need to lock a ticket on the inquiry system to ensure that the back office will allocate the money to you, your customer code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just I want just want to show you on QRS where to go to to lock the ticket. Okay, so I'm going to log in um, to QRS. So you log in with your customer code and password. That's what you use to log in. So so. Um, once you've logged in, you will go to new ticket. Then first of all, you need to provide your customer code and click on find customer. Then you select your customer code. All tickets will be displayed. All your active tickets will display here. And then you'll select the department. For allocation of funds, the department is finance and then allocation of funds. And then what is important that you must attach a certified ID copy and proof of payment. So a print screen of the payment is not acceptable. Um, the finance division will, will not be able to allocate your funds if you just put a print screen of the, um, of the payment. You need to provide the proof of payment. Scan it as one attachment and you can just request here to um, uh, to, to allocate the funds to your account and then you you can explain especially if you put it into a wrong account to use the wrong reference and it's now in somebody else's account it can be a, a challenge that so you must act as soon as possible so that they don't use your money and you click on add files and then you can choose the file so you save your um, your proof of payment and ID on your desktop and then submit, attach it here and then you can submit the ticket. As soon as it's submitted, you will receive a ticket number and it will go to the back office where they, the staff there will attend to your query. So, okay, sorry, I just want to go back to the presentation. Okay, the next um, aspect, a few, so a few weeks ago, we actually had a, a challenge where customers did not receive their documents. And it, um, in, it caused a lot of calls to the call center, etc. cetera. And um, so what, what happens if you don't receive your documents, it's easy for you to basically go back to certificates and disclosures on e-services to request it again. So, first of all, to retrieve a registration certificate, that is also, so basically as soon as you've registered the com company, you, can, you will receive the registration document as well as the MOI, the incorporation documents and the welcome letter. But should, should it happen that you did not receive it or you require it again, you can request it from e-services again. So I will show you live out where to go to retrieve the, oops, sorry. So let me just stop this uh, 
presentation and then I'll share the live screen for e-services. So basically, if you go to base, the, the CRPC website, oops, and then you click on online transacting e-services. Can you, can you see my screen, Shani? Yes, we can, Martha. Thanks. Yes, Martha, we can see. Okay, so you're on e-services and then you will log in with your customer code and password. Then you go to um, sign in with the, the, the CAPTCHA code and click on login. Okay, what is important here, the contact details will also display here so that you can check if is my contact details, are they correct or must it be updated? Okay, then you click on transact and then all the menu options are displayed. And then click on certificates and disclosures. Okay, free disclosure I'll show you now because that is available on this portal. Official disclosure is 50 Rand. And what official disclosure is basically the history of the company. So all the banks, SARS, everyone should accept the disclosure document if they require any documents from CIPC because it shows the status of the company, it shows if it's active or in the registration process, as well as the history and who are the directors. But if you just received a registered company and you need the incorporation documents and registration certificates, you can click on incorporation documents. Okay, it's a bit slow now. Okay, so what is important that if you are a director of a company, you will see use this section and if you click there on expand, it will tell you which companies you are a director of and you can request it free of charge. But if you are not an active director, like I am not a director of any company, it will state you are not an active director in any active enterprise. Use the section below to get the company's MOI documents. So you can do um, still request MOI documents, but they must be 30 rand in your customer code. And then the email, the this, this documents will be emailed to you. As soon as you click on, say for example, you select here, I hope it's an active company. <laughs> it will tell you, um, let me show you. Okay, it will. I don't have enough money in my account. You will see I have 15 rand. So it will say you do not have enough credit. So then you must pay, there must be 30 rand displayed in your customer code and you can click on generate certificate and the certificate will be emailed to you, your account. Okay, then the next one is <clears throat> Let me just go there. Okay, as I mentioned, official disclosure, it costs 30 rand per certificate and it will also be emailed to you and it will show the history of the company. So there are two notices on our website this, uh, because sometimes they will say that the, our certificates are not in color or um, they're not sure it's a, they can't, can't authenticate it. So, so we publish the notice for, from the Financial Intelligence Center to state to the banks and to SASH and to any other third party that they, must, they have to accept our disclosure certificates, even if it's not in color. And then notice 9 of 2016. So you can retrieve it from our website. Um, advise customers on online verification of the CIPC certificates so that they, uh, so because we get quite a lot of calls where they say, but the bank wants this document and I don't accept this document. So they must accept our official disclosure certificate. And as I mentioned, you can refer them to notice nine of 2016 and the FIC document.
Okay, then directors, they can also retrieve the documents on this portal on e-services free of charge. So um, as I mentioned now, they can go to retrieve the 14.3 and the MOI will be available. So that's just basically a print screen of what I've uh, provided to you already, um, what I've showed live to you. But I just want to mention, if, if you want to see if a specific person will, uh, does have um, any companies or, or the, um, is a director of a specific company, you can click on person disclosure and type in the ID number and it will show you if that person is a director of a company. The other um, challenge that we customers call us about is that they receive, they don't receive documents when they apply via e-services and then they must sign the documents. For example, if they register a company, they will receive a document that must be signed and must be sent back to CIPC. So what happens often is that they don't receive that document and then they can't continue and finalize the registration. So on e-services under certificates and disclosure, the option is there to click on recent company registration application form or recent director of amendment application form or for close corporations. They can also, if they change the membership of close corporation, they can ask a recent member application form or recent all documents. So if you click on recent all documents or recent company registration document, it will show you the tracking numbers of the documents that, um, and you can select it and say recent. And then the same document will be sent to your inbox again to enable you to continue. So what happens sometimes is that um, you must be add CIPC to your safe sender list and check your junk folders as well to make sure that the email is not maybe lying in the junk folder. What um, sometimes like Yahoo and Gmail, they will blacklist CIPC because we sent out a lot of no reply emails. And then from our side, we have to ask to them to add us back to their safe list, to whitelist us basically, so that we, um, that, that we can receive documents, customers can receive documents from CIPC again. So um, just make sure always that you add CIPC to the safe senders and to to check, check your junk folder as well if you haven't received any documents from CIPC that you're supposed to receive. Okay, before we get to name reservation, what I just want to show you as well is the annual return certificate that customers also don't receive always. So, so if you on our website, on e-services again, online transacting e-services, <clears throat> and you sign in to file annual returns, you go to file annual returns. If you have not received your annual returns certificate, once you filed your annual returns, you just go here and say reprint annual return certificate and you type in the enterprise number and generate certificate and the proof of the annual return filings will be emailed to you. Okay, please share the screen. It's not showing oh, the annual return. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me just um, show, show you the screen again. Share. Okay, so let me just start again from the from where. Uh, okay, so it's when you are on the CIPC website. You click on online transacting e-services. And then from here, okay, if you're not logged in, you log in. Oh, sorry, customer login. And log in. Then click on transact and file annual returns. 
And then on this screen, okay, first of all, if you want to calculate your annual returns, it's annual return calculator. If you want to reprint the AR certificate, there's an option reprint AR certificate. And then you just type in your enterprise number and click on generate certificate. And the, and the AR certificate, the COR 30.1, will be emailed to your um, email address. Magda, we cannot see your screen again. No, yeah, yeah, no, I'm just moving back to the uh, presentation. Okay, so the next topic that we're going to discuss is name reservation. So if you want to reserve a name, um, it is not compulsory to reserve a name when you decide to register a company. But if you don't reserve a name when you register a company, the enterprise number will be your name automatically of your company. So, um, and then you can always do a name change later as well. If you do a name change from customer registration number to name, that is free of charge. But if you change from one name to another, it's not free of charge. If you do name reservation, Electronically, it costs 50 Rand. You can put four names, um, but it's important to put them in order of priority. So your first preferred name must be on line one, and the, 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 then etc. in the order of priority. What is important, if you file for a name reservation, it is a filing fee, so it's not refundable. So that's why we always advise to rather put more than one name in order of priority. Just because if your first name is not available, and that's the only name that you've provided, if that is rejected, the 50 rand will still be deducted and it's not refundable. All right. What is important as well, when you reserve a name, don't put... PTY Limited, if you want to reserve a private company or LTD, a public company, etc., or co op, because at the end, the PTY Limited will be included in your registration certificate. Because if you indicate that you want to register a private company, CRPC knows and it's automatically added that it's a PTY Limited. So as I mentioned, mentioned, name reservation can be done before applying for company registration or you can apply at the same time for the name reservation and the company registration. <clears throat> as I mentioned, the name reservation, the, the enterprise, if it's not reserved at the same time, then the name reservation, the enterprise number, sorry, apologies for that, the enterprise number will be your name and then a name change can be done later. Okay, and then the private comes, so as I mentioned, name, company registration is 125 rand and name reservation 50 rand. Okay, non and non-profit companies without members and the standardized MOI this is also 175 rand. So it's 50 rand for the name and 125 rand for the registration of the company. So private companies and non-profit companies can be registered using BIS portal and you don't need to submit any documents if you use BIS portal to register the company. So let me show you um, live. Let me just go to the BIS portal on where you need to go, the steps that you need to take. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So first of all, when you log, let me, let me start here where I log in. So there I sign in with my, my ID number and my password because only South African citizens can use this as a, 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 a portal for company registration. You must be a South African citizen. So when you are here, it will show you your details, your, your disqualification status of meaning you're not disqualified as a director. 
and the balance and then you can click here on register a new company okay then it will tell you that a company may be registered with or without a name it's 125 rand to register a company and for a private company and non-profit company without members and you may apply for names then important we so this portal caters only for south africans and citizens south african citizens you and you can use either as a card or a, you can use the declining balance or the customer code the money in your customer code if you use this portal to reserve a name and register a company but there is a director verification so if you register companies, you need to have all director identity documents and marriage certificates on hand because some verification questions can be, for example, the date of issue of the ID, the marriage date as per home affairs, the DHA, or the spouse, the ID number of the spouse. So you can see it's also how to guides on how to register. And then you click on new registration then you must read and accept the terms and conditions and continue and you must also accept the terms and conditions for the compensation fund as well as for uif and then you can continue and then from here you can select that you, if you want to register a private company or a non-profit company okay and then continue and then you'll type in the id numbers and it will be verified so this is the process for company registration as as um i, I showed you the process where you signed in and you click on new registration you can also go to services and then company registration so um, I've showed you the process where you can get your registration certificates on e-services. You can also retrieve your registration certificates from this portal where you click on services, company registration, and then registration certificates. And, but for this portal, you must be the director of the company to be able to retrieve the registration certificate here. So what you will receive is basically the same as on this uh, on e-services the welcome letter the notice of incorporation the notice of incorporation if there's an annexure the registration certificate and the moi but you might as i mentioned you must be a director otherwise you need to use e-services if you uh, if you want to retrieve the certificate okay so and then for services if you click on company name change, you'll get actually to the name reservation. So, so services and then name change and name reservation. And as I mentioned, you need you can you can type only one name, but it's advisable to select more than one name in order of preference. So you type your names and click on continue. Um Mohta. Continue. It will say it's available. This is a this is not a the results as reflected on this screen is based on a preliminary search conducted on entity names and it does not guarantee that one of the proposed names will be reserved. So this state is available it does not mean that the name will be automatically approved. And you will be notified of the final results because um, names are also going to the back office where it is examined before it's approved. So even if it shows that this is no exact match, it may still happen that this name is not approved. So just take note of that. So then you click on continue. And what is very important when you reserve a name via this portal, is that you need to pay the money within 24 hours otherwise the name will not be approved and it will go back to the um, you know it will not it will not continue the transaction so basically then you can add it to the card uh, if you have enough money 
in your customer code, you have this option to use the customer balance and select this option. But because I don't have enough money, I'll have to use the card option to reserve the name. So now it says the name has have successfully been lodged. But if you don't pay within 24 hours, it, it's not, you know, it will be out of the queue again and you have to restart again. All right. So then if you once you've paid, you'll receive a tracking number and then you can go to company registration if you want to to reserve the uh, to do the name reservation and company registration simultaneously. The other thing that I just want to mention what you can check on the BIS portal, what is very um but it helps a lot. If you okay, let me just go back to home. Mm -hmm. Services. The BIS profile. Previously, there was a um, free disclosure on e-services where you could go to search the status of your company. That service has have been discontinued because, because of the Poppy Act. You have to sign in to BIS portal first, and then you can go to BIS profile to search for any company. So you click on search by and then you can say an enterprise name or enterprise number. So let's go to enterprise name and I will search impact. I don't know, I'll, I'll impact food. Let's see if there's anything like that. I'm not sure. So there is one. It says impact food catering and projects. It gives you the enterprise number. It shows you the status of this enterprise. And then you click on view. So from here, it will show you the company details, the director details, auditor and annual return details, as well as the enterprise history and the triple BE details. So if you click on company details, you can see this company is in IR deregistration process. Then you need, if your company's status is IRD registration process, take note that you need to file the annual returns urgently to prevent your company to be finally deregistered. Then you can also see the director details and it will not show the full ID numbers, but it will show if this, how many directors and the status of that director. It will show the annual return auditor and annual return details. It will show you when the annual returns were filed and we, uh, which ones are outstanding. So you can see since 2013, this company hasn't filed any annual returns. They are, they are in non-compliance since 2013. And then the enterprise history. So if you need this history of the company, as I mentioned, you need to go to e-services and retrieve a official disclosure for 30 Rand. So the, this enterprise history will tell you if there was, um, say for example, like annual returns, the non-compliance was emailed to the customers for them to take note, but there was no details on the system for this company. All right, and then the BEE status, if, they, if, if this entity has not applied for a BEE certificate, and if there's any other details, it will be also listed here. Okay, then let me just um, go back to the presentation. So basically, the BIS portal is a one-stop shop. So it's the, as it says there, it is a paperless, there's no form and document submission. So it's an easier, user-friendly way to register a company. But as I mentioned, it caters only for South African citizens. The other services available, you can also register um, with SARS via the BIS portal to a obtain a tax number, UIF, and the compensation fund. And then BE certificates if the turnover is less than 10 million. So you can use BIS portal or you can use e-services. We also offer the off, um, 
the option to register at the name, main name or website address because we have an agreement with Zatna. And via the BIS portal, it's also linked with the different banks where you can open a bank account. Then the other services, you can also do company name change, company and CC address change, and you can file your annual return via this portal. And there's also a Google business services where you can advertise or ensure that your company's name is appearing on the searches that um, when, you, when anyone is searching on Google. So it's all a one-stop shop, this portal. It's completed in 24 hours as you must just make sure that the payment are done as required. What is important on this portal is that every member must have their own email address and cell phone number. Um, fee payments can be done via debit and credit card. So it helps, uh, as I mentioned, we, uh, there's quite a lot of queries where the funds are not allocated to the account. So if you use a card, it ensures that your money is deducted and immediately and it's not a problem with misallocation of funds. Um, as I mentioned, the fee payments can be done via customer code as well if there's enough money in the customer code. So um, this is just basically a print screen of the e-services. If you click on services on the BIS portal, as I mentioned, you can do the status of your company. You can view it via the BIS profile. You can do company registration, the SAR services, domain name, triple B E compensation fund, UIF, and you can apply for bank account here on the BIS portal profile. You can do name change, address change, annual returns, and the Google business services. So this is just a sprint screen of what I've shown you already on the BIS profile where you can search via enterprise name, enterprise number, or also director ID, where you can get the enterprise details and the status of the company. Okay, what I just want to mention, CRPC only caters for businesses registered with CRPC. So companies, close corporations and cooperatives. Um, a sole proprietor and a partnership is not registered with CRPC. The same with trusts, non-profit organizations and associations. So if you need more information in regard to NPOs, non-profit organizations, you need to inquire from the Department of Social Development. Um, CRPC only registers non-profit companies within you receive a, a, a registration number. Okay, you may also follow this portal Facebook as well as CRPC on Facebook. And questions can also be asked on Facebook Messenger. And if you want to contact CRPC, okay, the, the website, and then inquiries, as I mentioned, if you click on um, CRPC .c www.crpc.co.za and then there is a tab inquiries, you are encouraged to lock tickets with regard to process, um, processes and you're not sure about any process or the status, you're encouraged to lock it on um, the inquiries website so that the back office responsible for that specific unit, the topic, like names or whatever, can attend to you. Okay, and then we also have uh, Twitter and Facebook accounts and you can contact the call center on 86 for any inquiries. Okay, thank you very much, Shani. Okay, we have a few questions lined up, so I will just put them up and hopefully you can attend to them, Magda. Okay. Thank you, Magda. That was an awesome presentation. Now, we will only be taking queries that are related to the topics that we have covered in this presentation. So, um, Loretta, please read the questions that are put in our comments column. Okay. okay, we have one. Uh, it says on this portal, we as accountants uh, became aware upon UIF compensation registration. We cannot do it on our customer code 
Why is this? Must we register each company on this portal? Okay. Um, just remember that this, this portal is, a comp is basically catered for the end user. So, so the end user must apply for UIF or com company registration, etc. via this portal. So, so it's not basically, this platform specifically is not focused on intermediaries, but more towards the end user. Yes, that's correct. The next question, um, I think that person needs uh, assistance with pe person disclosure, if you could show them how to do that, because it says when clicking on certain items, it directs us to this portal. I can't seem to find my way around this. Could you please show us, e.g., person disclosure? Okay, I can do that. So, yo, as I mentioned, okay, let me just go to this portal. As I mentioned previously on e-services, you could do um, a free disclosure. So free disclosure, if you click on free disclosure now on, on e-services, it will direct you to this portal. So let me log out first. <coughs> so as soon as you log in, you need to log in first with your customer code, or not your customer code, your ID number and your password and click on log in. As soon as you've logged in, it, there's an option view this profile. You can also get it under services this profile, but you can click on view this profile. And then if you unview this profile, you can click on search by, and then it gives you the option enterprise name, enterprise number, or director ID number. So if you want to do a person disclosure, you need to type in director ID number. So if I type my ID and say search, ID passport number entered is not an active director or member in any enterprise. So if the person is a director of a company, it will display here. But I am not a director of any company, so it will say ID passport number not an active member or director or member in any enterprise. The same if you do enterprise number search. What is important when you do an enterprise number search is it must be in the format K or B. So, for example, K2021-000123. You can't use... Um, you can't use the other format. So yeah, yeah, it is. And the same for close cooperation, it will be C with the, the date of the, year, of the year of the registration and then the number. So then you can get the company details. So you need to click on this. You, you will see the company details, director details, and your return details. So for example, this enterprise is in business. Then the director details will be displayed as well as the <clears throat> auditor or annual return details. So if there's annual returns outstanding, it will display here as per the previous example. And you can also get the enterprise history. So for example, there was a address change or whatever, it will be displayed here. Okay, I hope that, will, uh, that answered your question. Yes, thank, thank you, Master. Master. Uh, okay, there's Lara, another so the one. Question. Okay. Um, Tiny Dangazela says, I've been sending a proof of payment, but when I log in, it still shows that I'm owing. It was never captured since 2020 August. I used the banking details on your website, but until today, don't know where my money was allocated to. Okay, Tiny, as I mentioned, if, if it was not allocated, you need to lock a ticket on the inquiry system. So you need to go to this um, inquiries site and you need to click on as I mentioned new ticket and then you select finance allocation of funds and you need to attach the proof of payment and your certified ID copy of the owner of the customer code so you click on add files and you attach it as one attachment and submit and then you will receive a ticket number and the back office will allocate the money to your account. But as I mentioned, we need your proof of payment. 
and it must be logged. It must you must follow the correct process by logging this on the inquiry system. Okay, thank you, Marta. Loretta, yes. any other questions? Yes, there's uh, two more. Here's one from Yumna Abrams. How do we reset email address on the inquiry system? The email addresses differs on our customer account and we want to update this to ensure both logins have the same information. Okay, now the, the inquiry system is linked to your customer code. So you must use exactly the same email address. The, the email address will auto, automatically be the same on the inquiry system as on your customer code. So as soon as you log in, you, you will use the same password as for your customer code. So I, I'm not sure where do you mean uh, how it differs because it, as I said, it's linked to your customer code. You also sign in with your customer code and your customer password, or your, your, your customer code password. Okay, thank you. Loretta, the next one. Okay, Salo so, Salo so says, I tried to register my business but it doesn't put me through it. I'm not sure how it's not putting him through. Could be a browser issue, uh, Nachta. Okay, um, so what I just want to know that you use the best portal or which platform that you use and that what is, okay, we need an error message or something to be able to assist you. I don't know, I'm not sure what, you know, what you mean. You It doesn't yes. put me through it. Okay, uh, Salo, I think you should inbox us with your uh, error code and your error message, and then one of the Facebook agents will respond to your query regarding uh, your difficulties in registering a company. Loretta, is there any other um, questions that we yeah, have? It's, yes, it's more of a comment uh, of... From Kate Sharma saying, please do live on how to remove directors successfully. I've struggled for so long and six times now it's still getting declined. You guys decline with all sorts of reasons. It will also help if you decline and, and point out everything I need to fix. So it's more related to directors. Okay, Kate, I think you should go to the CIPC website. There is videos on YouTube videos that will assist you on how to... Um, to uh, remove directors. If that is not, if you're not able to come right on that, please inbox me and then we will, um, or inbox CIPC and one of our Facebook agents will assist you. Okay, is that it, Lerato? No, Yumna Abrams is back. Uh, he <laughs> says, I have amended our customer account email address as the old email is no longer operational. The email address has not pulled through to inquiry system. Okay, Yumna, can I ask you to also send an um, email to education at cipc.ca.za and then we will have a look at it and respond to you uh, to see what's the problem. Because as I mentioned, it's linked to your customer code. It should, it should not happen. So if there's a problem, we have to investigate. If you can just send an email to edu education at cipc.ca.za. Okay. Uh, thank you from Yumna and Ceci Kambula says, awesome work. Can I view this presentation later on FB page, Facebook? Yes, it's on Facebook, so you can uh, uh, view it anytime you would like. Okay, thank you, Shani. Uh, I think that's about it. Awesome. Okay. We have now come to the end of this webinar, and I'm confident that the distinguished speaker has communicated valuable information to you all. We hope you find today's presentation interesting and that it will assist you. Thank you for joining our Facebook live streaming. Good day. Thank you, Lerato, and thank you, Marta, as well as Ruthani for all your assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.